Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Fort of Mickey Loco channel. So today we're gonna do a quick autopsy video on this first gen 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Now this engine came out of the first in a series of three engines that had failed, 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines that had failed all in one week, came in on the hook to my shop. It was kind of a weird, rare oddity. Um, but this one failed because the customer had chain stretch issues, okay? And he basically kept driving it. So the chain started stretching uh, and it started getting 16 and 18 error codes for cam and crank correlation because it was so far stretched or elongated as some of you want to call it. Um, and he basically kept driving. It would rev it up to 2,000 RPMs. Uh, when it started, you know, kind of shuddering down at, at lower speeds, he just rev it up and he would keep driving it. And eventually it got so far stretched and the RPMs were so high and everything was so advanced with the different uh, phasers on here that they did contact, at least the intake side did on here. Um, so all the valves are currently stuck open and he has zero compression across the board, even though everything was intact up front here. Uh, so this is the first in a series of three. We'll show you a video of what that sounds like in a second here. Uh, then the second one uh, was the same thing, first gen, 3.5 liter EcoBoost, and that one just kind of in exploded basically. It kind of ate itself up because the customer was not changing its oil and it just kind of burned up. And the third one was the second gen, 3.5 liter EcoBoost, and that one had a major head gasket failure. Cool and flooded the cylinder, washed the bearings, and it took out the engine. But that one had 234,000 miles on it. So again, this one had about 147,000 miles on it and had the usual chain stretch issues. It was very bad on this, on this one. And he just revved it and he drove it until the engine basically wouldn't start anymore. Um, I do have the chains back. I have four chains back here so you can compare and see how much it actually stretched. But first, I want you to hear how this sounded uh, when it came in on the hook. This is a 2011. He had the usual P0016 and 18 codes, kept driving it, kept revving it, kept using it. And now the chain snapped or something, went way too far. And now he has zero compression across the board on there. And you can just tell, even without a scan tool or uh, a gauge or anything, just take a listen. So it's cranking really fast, around 210 RPM. I put a gauge on it and none of the cylinders have compression. I mean, zero PSI. So this one is done for. Pretty crazy, right? Things cranking way too fast, sounds weird. You know something's up, either chain's broken or in this case, all the valves are bent. Crazy. Uh, so I did a compression test all across the board. They were all low, evenly. Um, so. This right here is, I mean, look at it. It's not that bad. It's a little bit of varnish on there. Uh, for this kind of mileage and be a, a GTDI engine, it's not that bad. Um, so this right here is one of those life lessons. When the check engine light comes on, especially when it has timing error codes, you get it looked at, you get it fixed. You do not wait, you do not push the engine because something like this can happen to an otherwise perfectly fine engine. The first gen engines in reality are quite reliable. So just take a look around. You can see everything on here. There's nothing really to look at. Some varnish. You know, the mileage isn't that bad. The guides are intact, all the usual stuff. Um, you start looking at some of these um, solenoids on here. There's not even that much metal inside of them in the screens on them. Here, I'll get you guys focused. There we go. Now, one of these did have a hunk of plastic in there probably when it freaking finally let go so those screens are not that bad for you normally see that in timing jobs is one of these ones had a, a, chunk, a chunk of uh a black plastic from something so um something else let loose in here too while it's all coming apart and all these chains are just flopping around in here so i just want to show you guys take a look all around it i mean everything's intact there's not much to break these use uh, direct acting mechanical buckets, so there's no followers or lash adjusters, none of that stuff to kind of break these. So that's why they're so darn reliable. Uh, but once that chain starts stretching though, it will have an issue with valves contacting because you know the EcoBoost is built for power and all that stuff, but also for fuel economy, cafe standards, all that stuff. So everything's much tighter now and its tolerances to squeeze as much as they can out of the engine for the amount of fuel injected into it. And that includes valve overlap and stuff like that, especially in the EcoBoost engines for the EGR function. So 
it's all very important, but it also means everything's very close. When that chain starts getting sloppy, things start getting very close and they push the RPMs and stuff starts contacting. Um, so if you look down uh, any one of these, like let's say this one right here. So if you're looking at this one right here, I'll show you what's going on. So if you look at the uh, lobes right here, so this is the nose of the lobe. It's the same thing over here. And this is for number six, okay? It's just a good example. They're all doing the same thing though. So the nose is right here. You see the nose, that pointy part of the, of the cam lobe? That's called the nose. And that is on the directly opposite side, 180 of base circ, which is a rounded portion of the cam lobe. So if you look down in here, I get a light down in here. These valves, both these intake valves should be closed. And let me get you down in there a little bit more so you can see, not that far guy. You can see them down in there. They are still open. See that black ring around the valves? We're on base circle. Nothing wrong with the springs, nothing like that. Nothing's broken. And the valves are stuck open. And they're like that on just about every one of these. Every one I've, I've actually checked and gone through on here, uh, that was at base circle they were open so this one's basically on base circle same thing they're sticking out just a little bit they should be closed by now this one i believe is actuating so that's going to be open and this one they're slightly open and we're basically on base circle and they're open so what happened i'll try to get you a good shot of it here so this is the inside of the cylinder right here, okay? So we're looking down in this cylinder right here. Got a camera down in there. And this right here, let me see my finger, where my finger at? There it is. So we're looking down into the cylinder. You see the crosshatch here and all that stuff, pistons down here. So we're looking up at, through a side shot of the, uh, the actual valve. So this is the intake valve, went down, smacked it, and it bent, and this one bent so bad they actually cocked off to the side enough that it was rubbing right here on the head. I've had other ones where um, debris or something came off and I was leaving uh, lines in the cylinder, you know, scratches down the cylinder walls, uh, stuff like that. But just about every one, as you go through each one of these, you're gonna see they, the intake valves anyway, they smacked the piston. And that little bit of smacking gets them bent just enough where they can't fully close when they come all the way up because the valve guide inside of there is so precision, so precise to the size and the clearance between that and the valve stem that any deviation from that, it's gonna bind up. Um, and that's what happens when it gets a little smacking like this. Now they're bent just enough and it can't go fully into the valve guide uh, towards the, the uh, stem here, towards the face of the valve. So that's what's happening with each one of these. That's a good uh, picture of the inside there. So what caused all this? Like I said, it was chain stretch, which is common on these engines. Uh, normally, once people start getting the 16, 18 codes and it goes into failure management and effects mode and starts cutting boost, people kind of worry and they bring it right in. This guy didn't. He figured he'd get pushed a little bit longer for finances or what re whatever reason. And he pushed it to the point where the engine let go because all his tolerances are so close. So what kind of chain stretch are we looking at? So here it has one long chain. You can see it, it's a very long chain. It's probably six feet long in total. So three feet on each side. And it has one chain that wraps around everything. So once you start getting all these links on here, worn a little bit, look at these different little points on here get worn. Uh, the chain is going to stretch or elongate, okay? And when it does that, timing will be off and valves can't hit because it is an interference engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how much it's actually stretched. Let me get you over here, some good light. All right, so let me get you in here. These are all the same. There we go. They're all the same on the same bar up there. Okay, so this one right here is from this engine. This one right here is from a 14 edge that only had 68,000 on it and was showing a P0016 codes also. They're about the same. 
That is from a vehicle that just had a water pump done on it. Otherwise, the chain was fine, but you change, you know, timing components while you're in there. So that's pretty much how a regular chain looks. And then this one may or may not have been setting a code, but you can see it's starting. It's in between a good one and an elongated one. Let me just give you a visual on that. You can see a difference, how much further it's hanging down like that. So these two are both close. Now the difference with this one right here from that edge is, yeah, it was long and it was throwing codes, but um, this one, they kind of like freaked out and they brought it in for service right away. This one's from the, this engine, just, just as long, but he pushed it. RPM's pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and they contacted. So there's that, that small of a variance in there, and you can have a, a total engine failure. That's why you do not wait to do a timing job, especially once you get a 16 or 18 code. So yeah, that's what happened with this one. Hope that's a good, good, good visual for you guys. But yeah, otherwise, these engines are quite reliable, these first-gen engines, if you maintain the oil and you listen to, you know, the engine and the um, check engine light when it comes on, you get it service, you get it looked at, you make sure it's okay to keep driving. Um, if you don't have money, you stop driving it or else you're going to have a bigger bill in the end. That's all for now. See you guys next time.